Hello and welcome to the installation video for Crown Automotive's 6800 4085HD and 83500202HD ball joints. To help with overall clarity and to improve lighting, we have taken the axle out of the vehicle and placed it on top of a bench in our R&D shop. Removing the axle from the vehicle is not recommended and will not make the installation any easier. The current camera angle would be the same as if you were standing in front of your vehicle looking towards the front passenger side. A 22mm open-ended wrench is used to remove the factory tie rod nut. If your ball joint spins like ours did, we recommend using a 6mm Allen wrench in the end of the stud, or a bit like we did, to keep the assembly from turning to remove. Once the upper nut is loose, you can use a tie rod puller, pickle fork, or hammer to remove this tie rod from the knuckle assembly. We have found that a hammer strike to the side of the knuckle is quite effective if a puller or fork is not readily available. Remove the three wheel bearing bolts using a 12.13mm socket or wrench. Removing the wheel bearings can be a bit tricky. If you're having an extremely difficult time, we recommend checking out our Crown Tips and Tricks video for unit bearing removal. Previously stated, we removed the axle shaft to help with camera views and reduce visual obstructions. We recommend keeping the stub shaft and outer wheel bearing together and removing and reinstalling the entire assembly together. This will prevent having to retorque the 36mm hub nut. In the video, you can see the unit bearing was extremely easy to remove. Normally, they are difficult to remove because they have rusted to the knuckle. We removed and cleaned the surface of the unit bearing prior to filming to speed up the process. Once the axle shaft and unit bearing are removed, we begin working on removing the knuckles. Start by removing the cotter pins from both the upper and lower ball joints. Once they have been removed, the ball joint nuts can be removed. The upper ball joint castle nut uses a 22mm socket or wrench while the lower ball joint uses a 28mm socket or wrench. We leave the upper nut threaded on a few threads to ensure the knuckle assembly is not damaged when the taper is loosened. The knuckle has a raised striking surface where a well placed hammer head will loosen the assembly from the tapered ball joints. Once the taper is loosened, the upper ball joint and knuckle can be removed from the axle exposing the ball joints. We further inspect the ball joints and seals to see just how badly they're damaged. As you can see, the lower ball joint is exceptionally loose and moves with just a touch. To remove the ball joints, we use a ball joint press that you can buy or rent at most auto parts stores. We start by removing the upper ball joint by pressing it up out of the axle housing. After it has been removed, the lower ball joint is pressed down out of the axle housing. You can see that the ball joint press passes through where the upper ball joint was when pressing out the lower ball joint. On our axle, a cordless impact was used to press out the upper ball joint. However, the lower ball joint required a breaker bar to remove. Alternate between tightening the press and striking the inner C with a hammer. The hammer strikes help release the tension that the ball joint press puts on the ball joint. It also helps in preventing the ball joint press from bending. We continued alternating between hammer strikes and tension until the ball joint was out. Got 
As you can see, the lower ball joint was in very poor condition. The assembly was loose and moved quite freely. We then prep the inner sieve by cleaning where the ball joints install and inspect for any unusual wear or damage. Installation of the heavy duty ball joint starts with installing the lower ball joint from the bottom up. Orient the ball joint so the grease fitting can be reached without removing the axle shaft. We oriented ours toward the front and slightly facing the center of the vehicle. Once the lip at the bottom of the ball joint is contacting the bottom of the inner C, it is installed. Do not press on the stud of the ball joint as it will damage it and shorten its life. The upper ball joint can now be installed from the top. We did run into some difficulty installing these ball joints. The bottom surface of the inner C where the upper ball joint presses is not flat. The use of spacers on the outside edge of the inner C is suggested to press it in. Repositioning the spacer a few times may be required to prevent the ball joint from contacting the spacer. Once the upper lip of the ball joint is contacting the top of the inner C, it is completely installed. Now install the knuckle and start the upper and lower ball joint nuts. Start by torquing the upper ball joint nut to 30 foot-pounds, followed by torquing the lower ball joint nut to 85 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the upper ball joint nut to 75 foot-pounds. Failure to torque in this sequence may cause the tapers in the knuckle to not completely seat. Install the unit bearing and axle shafts onto the axle using the three 12 millimeter bolts that were removed. Cleaning the mating surface of the unit bearing and knuckle will ensure that the unit bearing is completely seated when installed and will help removal in the future. Torque the three bolts to 70 foot-pounds. Finish the installation by installing the brakes, wheels, and steering. Happy wheeling!